What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, they did something that we thought was possibly not going to get done because they haven't done a good job in the past. Brian, they landed the plane on this one, Brian. Miss Marvel. Uh, a show that I was not very excited about, but I was always happy to see every week. I was entertained very much. So, um, I'm still get I'm still a bitter, I'm still getting annoyed with the six episode stuff. This six episode stuff is killing me, Brian. Um, it got you me more, worried. You want more? You want, I want, you want probably, I'm probably like, yeah, I want eight to 10. Okay. You know, I want eight to 10. Um, after episode five, Brian, the way that ended, it felt like an ending to me, you know? So it had me wondering how this episode, the final episode was gonna end. Brian, did you have that same um, um, feeling when you saw the fifth episode and how it ended and you, you were left wondering how, like, how this is gonna end? Yeah, a little bit. This show, this show definitely had a different rhythm than other shows. So most, a lot of Marvel shows, the second to last episode has been the best episode because they've had finale problems, but they've been good at setup. I actually thought that in this series, episodes four and five were a little bit tougher because they were more the, the history and culture lesson that they were trying mm -hmm. to impart about Pakistani history and Pakistani culture. And so I judge it not through my own lens, but watching my daughter watch the show, I think she had a little tougher time with episodes four and five because I was having to sort of explain to her like, okay, this is based on an actual historical event that happened, but they're importing obviously these comic characters, these superhero characters and storylines onto that. Uh, and they're taking you out of New Jersey and kind of going to, to Pakistan and traveling through time. So the show slowed down a little bit for me in episode five. I thought if you asked me, I would say the finale got back to its roots, whereas like five was more like, we got to do the exposition, we got to do the setup, and then we've got to kind of lay out a little bit of the bigger picture, maybe uh, mm -hmm. connectivity that we want to do. So yeah, I didn't enjoy five quite as much. That probably would be my least of the six episodes, mm -hmm. but I understood why it was there, certainly once we got to the very end of um do you want to talk about the revelation at the end of this uh yeah, or you why want don't to talk we start with the ending and go backwards because the ending is yeah. what everyone's going to talk about yeah it's such a big deal so they did it they finally did it. they mentioned the word mutation and certainly covers there that label that she referred to that that is going to be just another label is going to be mutant brian how did you feel when i didn't know what was happening until he said that how do you how did you feel they executed that 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 introduction into the the, the mutant uh phenomenon so before he said the word, I thought I thought he was heading toward the inhuman, because that, that's what she is in the comics. She she's yes. an in, she's an inhuman. And then when he said it, and then I'm not going to steal your line about the the soundtrack, but when they gave you that additional like exclamation point of what he's talking about, I was like, oh, interesting, like yes. very interesting. Yeah. And then. So I had to explain to my, my kid didn't know what was going on. I was like, yeah. okay, this is a really big deal because there's this whole family of the universe of characters called the X-Men and I was trying to explain the rules in a minute. So as I got further away from it, here's what I settled on as to why they did this. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think, so by using Miss Marvel as the conduit into mutants, it allows them a starting point, which is completely separate from the Fox, from the 20th century Fox characters. Had they done it with like Wolverine or had they done it with 
even Namor, quite honestly, which I'm a little surprised it wasn't him. I would have put money that it would have been him. It would have been mm-hmm. in Wakanda forever. That he is the first mutant, right? And I think he will be a mutant. And I think he will be called the first mutant because this mm-hmm. somehow will predate what we just saw. Mm-hmm. But I think by doing it on Miss Marvel, part of their idea was like we want to do it with one of our characters as opposed to kicking opening the can of worms of one of the Fox characters who are the better known. That's I think it really came down to that. Because again, this was a Kevin decision. The interviews that have come out after, this was something where like literally there's a if you Google it, there's the, the directors um, you know, who did what was it about who, who they did bad boys for life right that's that's the one ah okay yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's them that 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 did what that directed the finale i'm not sure if they did i can't remember anyway the the directors who did this movie who did this series said that scene they were basically handed the script by kevin feige and told to shoot it just this way don't ask me any questions just do it that was literally like he gave them the scene and they executed yeah. it so that tells you like this was a very like premeditated by design they wanted miss marvel to be the the mutant entrant and i think it's like i said i just didn't think they wanted to have confusion by having it be one of the x-men x-men that they acquired yet in 20th century Fox. that's my explanation um i don't know about confusion but i think predictability this was a total surprise and that's what they wanted to do yes agreed also that's true and um they executed it well um no this is one of those luke i'm your father moments like oh snap that you're gonna remember this moment when they said this and and totally wreck on uh, miss marvel but hey this is the mcu not marvel comics right so um where do we go from here it didn't in retrospect it didn't bother me that much i mean they've changed the other things in the comics along the way that have frustrated me i was okay with this one i kind of was like all right like it doesn't ruin anything that we would hope for in the x universe yeah you know i mean she had she does have this element to her character they just flipped in human for x-men I don't know. I mean, in the sense of like, where do we go from here? Like, it, it makes me, it makes me wonder how grand the design is for Iman Balani, who is awesome, by the way, and I'm very much looking forward to her next ten years both yeah. doing this because does this, you know, we know she's going into the Marvels movie, but does this mean she's then gonna morph more toward the X verse? Is that where she's gonna show up a little bit more as a character? Like, possibly. Right, they're clearly making it so she can be pretty versatile. They clearly wanted this show to target younger audiences. And I would say like the X-Men by and large, you know, one thing we we didn't see quite as much with the 20th Century Fox version is most of them are supposed to be younger because the mutation happens with adolescents. They go to a school, right? Like we just want to focusing on Wolverine. He's older and, you know, Scott Summers is older, but like in some ways, the, the Matthew Vaughn first class version was probably a little closer to the comic spirit because they were yeah. younger. And yeah. so by having Miss Marvel be your young entrant into that, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued. I don't hate. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Um, how did you feel about Miss Marvel's powers and how she used them, especially in this last episode? Yeah, so um this was a series where the kind of shoddy marvel vfx didn't bother me because it was a show for the kids yeah like it works because it's meant to look bright and shiny and glittery and kind of that's the intent of it and so when she's got hers and kamran has got his colors and you know Conrad in the comics he's more white i think when he when he when he morphs into energy he's like white energy he's not like yellow and blue energy mm-hmm. it didn't bother me i actually like the fact that she kind of extended in a way that wasn't the way reed richards is going to extend right it was yeah. like okay she gets to stretch and she gets to do those things but not in a way where i'm like oh now when reed richards pops up on screen we've already seen all those effects before. so yeah 
I, I was okay with it. I really liked, like I said, this is not a finale that was for us. It was not. But my kid was jumping up and down watching this episode. And I will tell you, the moment that got her was the planet. And I, the minute they did it, I was like, oh, they know what the target here is. Because they're like, mm-hmm. they're at the board. They got all the like yeah. chalk outlines yeah. and they're kind of doing and she, and my And my kid's like, she was watching this. She's like, yeah, they get to the end of it. She's like, she goes, wow, that's a plan. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. For you, that's a plan. For us, we're like, this is silly, right? But like for her, she's like, this is the coolest thing ever. And then she was so fired up to see like the foam and the softballs and like all the things that like, yeah, they make these, they make damage control look like a bunch of stooges. But like for a kid's show, you have to do that. Like yeah, I've seen yeah. people that are hating on the finale because they're like, oh, damage control wouldn't be that incompetent. I'm like, dude, bro, like, dude, grow down like be a, be a kid for like five minutes that's what he, that's what home alone like in real life joe pesci and daniel stern would have would have taken out macaulay culkin in five minutes like it's, it's for the kids like enjoy it for what it is so i really liked that they went with that spirit and it seemed like everyone was having fun um and they kind of you know and at the same time they had kind of like a serious moment where um she got to use her powers. I love the scene with her dad on the roof. Uh, I thought that was like for as a father daughter thing was like super duper cool. Her family was hilarious to me. Yeah, her mom and dad were great. Her even her brother. Her brother was yeah. pretty, like he was pretty funny. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it 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 worked for me. I think if you ask me like the summation, like what I call it a great show and absolute no, but what it is, it's it's a really good little show. That's what it, yeah. and that's what I think it was meant to be. Like it's a really good little show for the younger audience. And they found a star. Mom Malani is a star. Period. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. It. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was happy. I was happy with it. What, what did you think of Brie Larson making? Now, that, what do you think about Brie Larson's appearance? What do you think it meant? I don't. I didn't know what to think of it. I wasn't terribly excited. I was like, "What the hell is going on?" Pretty much. That's all I thought about. What the hell is going on? I don't. What does this? What does this mean? Um, my guess was it was a multiversal swap. That was my first thought. Was okay. that if they're gonna if they're gonna connect the Marvels to the multiverse idea, that Brie Larson was somewhere else? It, he, she was in a different. Maybe she was operating in a different Earth. I don't know, but like that because she looked different. The suit was different. Yes. So my first thought was like, is this is this our Captain Marvel or is that like someone else's Captain Marvel? And I think it also sets up the idea of. Miss Marvel in distress, right? Because wherever she got transported to, she's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah. So I think that that was my first guess was maybe that was a way to connect Marvels to multiverse idea if they want to keep going with that. But yeah, yeah. But all in all, I enjoyed the show, man. Um, and this revelation certainly uh, has me very very excited for the purposes of having more discussions about it brian because there's a ton of discussions i want to i want to um get into uh i i don't know if people out there haven't i'm pretty sure most of you have um but for those who haven't seen the x-men animated series 97 uh, 97 is it, it they the music keeps on coming in um, talk about this. Talk about this, and then I got a point on this. Go ahead. One one of the things that that bothered me, I can't. I, I, I was, when it, when I first heard it, I was like, okay, I, okay, but it's like, um, are they gonna keep using this every time a mutant or act, like this is gonna get worn out really quick? The the only thing I want here next is dun 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 dun. You know. But you got to save that, you know, you can't give us this so early, yo, because this is just the beginning. Was it necessary? Absolutely not. You say mutation. That's it. You don't need to give us that, that, that little sound, that little music. Like, okay, I get it. I get it. But Brian, I thought the, the moment was dope. I thought that little thing there was cute, but it's totally unnecessary once you start using the word mutation. 
No, it does. It made me even more annoyed at Doctor Strange 2. Because think about it. If they hadn't used it in that ill-fated Illuminati sequence, I actually think it lands better. Oh, it lands it, in this show huge. because you would have heard it with the word and it would have meant something. Yeah. Now that we know that that Illuminati scene meant nothing other than fan service, yeah. it made me more angry because I was like, you, you not only did you give us a scene that didn't go anywhere in that movie, you stole the music drop from this show. And to your point, it fell flat in this show because you had already done it in the movie. But if you just saved it, you should have taken it out of the movie. You should have put it here for the first time. Then it would have been kind of a little cool to hear for yeah. the first time. But it just made me, I was like, wow. But being that they already used it, don't use it again. Don't use exactly. it Exactly. That's what I'm saying. This needed to be the first time and only time it was going to be used. Right. Yeah, but I, I I don't know who's out there. Like, I, I wish I can get into those offices and talk to these people. I, I just want to sit there and just have a conversation. That's it. Just have a conversation about where, what you decide to put out there, man, because we are so early in the game. I didn't even think we we're going to get into mutants. Now they've done it. Now we're getting into mutants. That's what people are talking about. We think. So I got to bring this up, right? Like, okay. One of the things that we're encountering in phase four is there's a lot of loose ends that are being put out there, but we don't really have a sense of when they're going to pay. Like that, I think is a is an issue. Like when we talk about grand design, you know, we see. Harry Styles at the end of poorly reviewed, disappointing Eternals film. He may never play that part again, for all we know, because that movie bombed. We see Clea take, who's going to be Doctor Strange's love of his life. When is that movie going to come out? We may not have come out for seven, eight years. We see Hercules at the end of Love and Thunder. These are all things that are like, they only, I don't love how they're doing it in general, but they only work if you have a sense of when, at the very least. So like, if they do this moment and then we don't talk about mutants again for like two or three years in any real dimension, then it meant nothing in that sense. Even if longer term, it does mean something. It doesn't, you have to carry it somewhere. So I hope, you know, Namor is, I think, a logical place. You know, if they bring that's to me the biggest, highest profile way to take what this was and expand it and then yeah. go from there. But it's got to be a near term thing for it to have any real weight with people. Yeah. So I agree exactly. with you. I'm surprised it's this early. And now I'm like nervous in a weird way because I'm like, if this is going to sit on the shelf for like seven shows, six movies in three or four years. That was kind of a cheap pop, uh, in my view. We have to get into another discussion of now really getting into a discussion about how do they do this? How do they introduce the mutants? Mm -hmm. Certainly we've got an introduction or, or a mention, but now you know how people get, Brian? People want it now, we want it soon. So like you said, if, if this they don't make it happen, uh, you know, is it going to fall flat when it does come out? And we had stated before regarding San Diego Comic-Con that we weren't going to get any mutant or X-Men announcement. Has this changed your tune? Yeah, a little bit. Because if nothing else, you know, the, the, the panel moderator or one of, if they take audience questions, which they usually do, somebody's going to ask the question. Yeah. Which means they're going to go to Comic-Con with an answer of some kind. But I would be stunned if they are like sitting there with a major casting announcement or director announcement for an X, a true X-Men film. I would be like, that's way sooner than I would have thought. And like I said, I, I, I think that would take away from Secret Wars or whatever else they want to do in, in phase five. So 
it has like i do feel like there'll be some discussion now of it beyond just x-men 97 which obviously that that's easy to talk about but yeah i i don't know and the, and the other part of this too is like they need to it's not all their fault they didn't know they were going to acquire 20th century fox but they now need to take their sort of post end game world and their multiversal world and write mutation and write mutants into that history in a way that doesn't feel cheap. Mm. Right. Yeah. So it's a heavy lift um, that I didn't think they were going to attempt this early. One last question before we sign off. What is the, why do you think there you, there. First of all, do you think they're using the X Men, the animated series, those X Men in this world in the MCU? Because obviously they play, they keep on playing the music, right? I, I, is it just synonymous with that? And we've heard rumors that they're you know continuing from I don't know, but there seems seems to be some connection that we are supposed to be familiar with these characters already based on what we've seen in the animated series, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously the way that Professor X is shown in the Illuminati sequence, right? They could have had him look, they could have had him look like Patrick Stewart from the Brian Singer films. They have the right to it. They chose to put him in the yellow hover chair. Like, I mean, they're, dro they're certainly dropping a few hints. Um, so, to me, though, that's a that's a path of high resistance. Yeah. Like that show is so like that show is so good, and X Men ninety seven is going to have a challenge in and of itself to live up to that as an animated show. I think if you're like literally trying to lift that into live action, that's tough. Because it's going to be tough to beat what was done in animated form. And if you don't do a great job of replicating it, then it, it, it might even look worse. So yeah. I think that I probably would steer them a little away from that. I actually think whatever you think of the Brian Singer franchise, I don't think they were totally off base in like, at least with the idea of like, let's have them look and feel a little different than that show. I mean, we do know, I mean, sorry, this has turned into from a Miss Marvel show to an X-Men show, but- Hey, they last, did it. They did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sound like Ricky Jarvis. That's right. <laughs> you, you, didn't want us, I mean, you didn't want us to talk about it? We'll put the scene in the finale. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? Um. I think the biggest question for me, Brian, is, you know, how are you going to do this? And, and, and it has to be very well done. And, you know, as I said last time, for me, the easiest, the easiest way is to have Professor X, every time he does something, his team does something, it's not like he hasn't done it before. He has. It's not like he, in, what, in X-Men 2 or X-Men 1, didn't he stop everybody from thinking and, and so that they can get out of the place because there's somebody, you know, uh, used their powers or something? Yeah, he does it in, I think he does it in, well, he does it in both. But X, in X2 is where they, he uses, they use Cerebro to kill all the mutants. Yeah. But there was a scene where, I think they were on a school trip and everyone's i think i don't know if it was gene that did it or professor x he stopped everybody's mind from everybody was frozen yeah just you can get out oh yeah 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 yeah. it's x1 yeah that's it or he rolls in yeah so to me that seems to be the only explanation for me or easiest route to take and him having to justify that, having to do that i think is very intriguing and very interesting to hear those conversations uh, because the hate for mutant kind is, 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 is like, if you watch the X-Men animated scene, the X-Men animated series, they hate mutants, you know? Um, so I think replicating that sort of, uh, 
uh, feeding towards their kind um, uh, is going to be very interesting to watch and how they pull that off. It's just so many things that can go wrong that with the X-Men that it, it doesn't concern. I'm not too nervous about it because I really think Kevin, if I, he, this is his second chance to really do a good X-Men, right? So I, I did want to float one thing that I've at least been talking, and I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I want to expand on it, which is I wonder if having Iman Vellani be the, the kind of the, the entry point indicates that they are going young with this as a way to stand apart from Hugh Jackman, James Marsden, Halle Berry, Anna Paquin, right? These are these were adult, fully adult actors and actresses when they took over the parts. And the reason I also bring it up is we know that Young Avengers is afoot. Right? We, we've seen so many of those characters introduced in the past two years in the TV shows. I saw this show, the way it was pitched, they clearly got a response from the younger audience. They are clearly trying to rope in a younger audience. Is there a chance that this is part of, listen, I mean, Disney's after dollars, they're after subscribers. That's a whole bigger issue. We think it's, that's having some negative effects, quite honestly, on I think what we're seeing, but mm -hmm. is there a push here to say, look, we're gonna make Young Avengers and X-Men be part of this younger universe that we wanna create? just floating the idea because they used the teenager as the entry point and like i said in the comics the x-men of by and large there's a lot of that a lot of those stories where they focused on them being teenagers and them being high schoolers and them being young uh i'd be interested to see that i just hope they don't do it with wolverine well he i mean he can't be a kid obviously. exactly but I'm just saying, like, it almost takes the first class idea and goes one step further. It's like first class, McAvoy was still an adult. Faz Bender was still an adult. Jennifer Lawrence was in her 20s, but didn't look beyond her years. This would literally be like, I mean, this is a terrible analogy, so don't hold me to it. But it would be like Beverly Hills 902 and 0, but like X-Men. You know, like, I'm saying like that's like they're really targeting that age demographic as like, we want to make sure these viewers are watching everything we do with Young Avengers and X-Men. We can grow with these characters for 10 to 15 years. I just, I know nothing. It's, I'm just it, it's quite ideas. possible. It's quite possible. I'd much rather already formed unit Already? Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I, it's not again. That would not really be for you and me. But I'm yeah. I just there just seems to be this big shift that I'm seeing where they are fixated on driving subscribers and viewers and really feeling like, hey, we've got people of our age bracket watching everything we do, no matter what we do, how much we get frustrated with it. What we mm -hmm. don't have is we need kids. We need kids to really buy in. And like my kid loves the MCU and is getting into all the stuff as she gets older. But like. There's, there's no question. Miss Marvel was aimed at her, like someone closer to her age, and she really responded to it. And then there's no question Disney saw that. So I just wonder if that's like a piece of the thinking. It's a very slippery slope. I agree. It's da it's a it's a risk if they do it. It's a very danger. I think it's a very dangerous because if it doesn't work out, man, there's certain characters, and I'll end it with this. You can't mess with Fantastic Four. And we can't mess up the X-Men. We certainly can't mess up Doom. So there's a lot of there's a lot of can't misses here. You know, yeah, well, look, I mean, we we've seen we've seen them be messed up already. Like we saw them mess up Fantastic Four twice, and they had to wait basically almost a decade. But that wasn't Marvel though, right? No, no, I'm just saying from the standpoint of the audience. Got it, got it, got Fantastic it. Fantastic Four in 2004 and 2005, it didn't work. We had to wait 10 years for the 2015 Josh Trank version, which was even worse. We're now going to be waiting almost 10 years for the next. I'm just saying, the data would say to you, and then in X-Men, Last Stand was 03. First Class was 2011, so eight years. The data is there to say if you screw this up, you're basically waiting almost a decade to get another yeah. track. Yeah. 
That's it. That's is what it is. And judging by how MCU is moving nowadays. Can't afford that. Something's got to give. San Diego Comic-Con is going to be very interesting, Brian. Um, but yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of, of Miss Marvel um, and what you thought of her being used as the introduction to mutants. Do you agree with the, the music being overused? It's like getting a little bit like... <laughs> Like, come on guys it's just like you know how many feel you ever seen Beverly Hill Cop 3 no is there any reason I should watch Beverly Hills Cop 3 no I watched it because I was I, I, I saw one and two and I was like you know but oh Beverly Hills Cop 3 let me watch it you know you know every everything every piece of music was the the the, the theme music to Beverly Hills Cop oh Axel uh, F yeah, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Every all throughout the it was done classical, it was done in rock, it was done in ballad, it was done every which way. And it was like, yo, can you stop it with the X-Men music? You don't need to use it every time. We're not that dumb. Um Brian, any last words? No, I would say I would say if you have kids and you're on the fence, Miss Marvel's a great way to to bring them into superhero shows, I think you, I think you like it, and uh, I, I was, I was generally pleased with the strategy around the finale. So ups, ups to the, and, and I, like I said, I thought that this show was very well cast too. I mean, there's a lot of people, these are a lot of actors we weren't familiar with uh, for the most part, and I thought everybody did a pretty, pretty good job in this one. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely is the show I would like. It's not going to be in my personal like top two or three probably but it's like for family i would say like yeah this is a good oh, yeah. one to, good one to start out with yeah yeah and brian one last thing i want to hear in your word what did you think of that clip i sent you from the silver surfer episode oh that was really cool that was really dramatic that's really dramatic can we get that in live action <laughs> oh man you gotta watch the you gotta watch the series man it was i'm telling you if you watch it you'll 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 understand why it didn't uh gain any traction because the concept and the vocabulary that they use and the way they speak was just too adult it was <laughs> way out there i can appreciate it now that i'm an older fellow but um is it is really disappointing when you see the last episode and it leaves that for the cliffhanger so it's like damn it you know yeah. but silver surfer i can't wait till they get to that but um I'm pretty sure we'll have a lot of discussions on, on that. So, yeah, let us know in the comments below what you guys thought of this episode. Miss um, Marvel, X-Men, all that stuff. Let us know in the comments section below, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.